Part one, strategic argument. Things are going to get interesting very quickly in this class. I'm going to engage you to provide examples and to react to my own examples. But of course, there are a few things we need to know and that we need to master before engaging in argumentation. That's the purpose of this particular seminar. Strategic argument. All arguments, and this is something you should remember for the remainder of the term, fall into one of these two categories, deductive or inductive. Some subcategories for inductive arguments are as follows. Arguments from illustration, narration and description, refutation, comparison, contraries. You'll see these in your text. So most of the arguments we use every day are actually inductive, not deductive. Furthermore, the most useful arguments are typically inductive. We'll see why that is shortly. Of course, examples are the best way to start. Here's the first. I went to Biggie Burger last night, and the service was horrible. The same thing happened the last time I went there. Same thing happened the time before that. So I concluded that the service at Biggie Burger is always horrible. Here's the formatting of this argument by premise and conclusion. Remember, the conclusion is the thesis statement that the argument is trying to persuade you of. In particular, the premises are the statements and the arguments that are meant to persuade you of the conclusion. Here, the conclusion is that the service at Biggie Burger is always horrible. This is quite a broad generalization based on um, three instances of my experience at Biggie Burger. You can tell which is the conclusion in various ways, but one way that is often helpful is to look for indicator words like hence, so, therefore, and so on. So the first premise is a specific claim about one visit to Biggie Burger, and this is going to help us to explain why this is an inductive and not a deductive argument. The second premise is another specific claim about what happened when I went to Biggie Burger. The third, another specific claim. Same thing happened the time before I went to Biggie Burger. So these are all particular instances of things I experienced. Each premise represents one of those experiences. But notice that the conclusion is not about a particular experience. It's not about a particular instance. It's a generalization, right? So I'm talking about Biggie Burger and the service as always being horrible. I'm generalizing, and in order to do that, I use words like always, um, most of the time, if I want to be a little bit more economical in my conclusion. I can use all, most, indicator words like that to indicate that I'm making a generalization about more than one instance. But notice that the instances that I'm making a generalization about here go a lot further than the instances and the premises. If my conclusion was that the service at Biggie Burger was horrible the three times that I went there, then it wouldn't be such a huge generalization, right? It would be a conclusion about the three instances that I talked about in the premises. So an inductive argument is one that you can spot in one of several ways. One way is to identify that the conclusion makes a very general claim that's even more general than the particular instances in the premises. Right? So you talk about one particular thing, then another, and then you generalize to all things or to many more things than you've talked about in the premises. So inductive arguments are arguments that go from specific instances to a generalization. 